Miss Hale, I would like to be like you when I grow up, for sure. <laughs> you are awesome and gorgeous. I, um, and let me tell you, people have done a lot worse with my brother's name uh, than Osaka. You know? <laughs> He's an honorary AAPI anyway, so it's all good. Listen, I, I really am, in all honesty, um, honored to be introduced by someone who has been around for so long and has worked so hard for so many years and who broke barriers um, without ever succumbing to fear or small-mindedness. So it really is my honor. And I, I, you know, I have had a lot of people express fear in recent days and it's understandable, particularly given the, um, the economic mess in which we find ourselves at present uh, because of Republican policies, I might add. But I, um, I do also want to just remind everyone that this campaign um, is extraordinary because it is about determination and a refusal to give in to fear and that we should feel strong and brave and um, and not worry too much but work hard and go forward. I tell you I, I went to the Democratic National Convention and that was amazing. It really was a chicken skin kind of, that's what we were talking about in the car. Um, I, uh, I looked out over the sea of people and um, and they were all you know, bringing it, and we were such colorful, uh, such a colorful sea. <laughs> and, um, you know, all kinds of emeralds and blues, and and uh, uh, you, you know, so many different kinds of people were there, bringing uh, their interests, their cares, and uh, and uh, first and foremost, bringing their compassion, um, their love, and I really began. Uh, to feel as though this campaign uh, was an act of love uh, and that it is my brother's greatest act of, of love. And so I'm honored to be here with you. First, because the Big Island is uh, the place where uh, the Democratic Party uh, was uh, born mid-century and nurtured, and also because this is a place of love. I, I really believe that, um, that what we have to do is bring uh, aloha to the rest of the world. Choices to uh, embrace and choices to um, 
realize our interconnectedness. I was thinking, you know, back on, I guess it was 1986, and I was spending the summer with my brother, and um, he took me to the south side of Chicago, and he took me to places that uh, looked war-torn, um, and there was a war raging. Um, and, and what we needed to do um, really was to restore a, a little bit of, of tranquility. Um, and what he worked to do was to get resources um, for those who had suffered greatly after the closing of the steel mill. He also um, made sure that folks were registered to vote. He made sure that people um, had earned income tax credits, that uh, small businesses and that you know, often women-led households were supported in ways they hadn't been before. He made sure that more folks had health care. And this was when he had uh, a lot of offers, both after uh, graduating summa cum laude from university and after becoming the first black president of the Harvard Law Review, a lot of lucrative offers that would have put money in his pocket. and uh, would have uh, offered a, an easier path, but he made the right choice. He looked in the right direction, and he made sure that he did everything that he could uh, to get resources for those who were in need of resources. And Boita Kamine and others in this party have made similar choices, and, um, and, and that makes me feel hopeful. Um, and I also want to encourage everyone here in the spirit of extending our aloha to the rest of the nation and world, uh, to make use of all of your contacts. In Nevada, perhaps, you have uh, Ohana there and friends. That is a key state, it's a swing state. And um, as is uh, in Colorado, New Mexico. I know you folks know people on the West Coast. Please, in addition to making sure that Hawaii brings more Obama votes than any other state in the country, please reach out to your friends and family in the Swiss states. Thank you. Because your power resides in the stories you tell and in the work that you do to convince others of the beauty of our collective vision and the fact that we have a chance here it is our chance to see ourselves differently, to present ourselves differently, to have a really inclusive democracy, you know, to make sure that uh, there aren't too many people left in the shadows. And, and, that, uh, and we cannot let that chance slip away. And so we gotta do everything that we can. Hawaii is looking good. Now that doesn't mean that we, um, that we can get lazy right, or apathetic, or sit back and chill out. But it does mean that uh, while we should stay focused um, on being present and getting people out and having those conversations with our friends and family and coworkers, that we also need to remember that, you know, even though we are a group of small islands, we are not small people and our arms have an enormous reach and we can embrace the whole country and remind them of their duty to their children to pass on a better future and a, a stronger nation um, than we have been handed uh, in recent years. So thank you so much for that. I really feel like right now, I mean, honor goes in these troubled times to those who are um, staying in the arena and not afraid to get dirty, to get their faces dusty, to get sweaty, <laughs> maybe a, le a, a little bloody even. And I, uh, I know that you folks are strong people and tough people, so I encourage you to find every bit of resilience in you and to give everything that you have in the next month and a half. And I thank you for doing that. And I'm looking forward to embracing you in, uh, later. And, uh, and I had so much fun uh, embracing you earlier. So you guys are good huggers. I like that about you. Thanks so much for having me, for being here, and for working hard.
I love you.